spirit. Come on, come on, go. I got Manny in the back with his spear. We're going to kill wild boar. And I have three spears blocking his attack. So that'll give me more protection. This is death in the swamp. This is a monster, monster moccasin. Right there. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did the gun fall out? I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. Florida woods. Today I'm hunting wild boar with my spears, but I'm not doing it alone. I have professional help. Manny, good morning, this is sir. RT. We got dogs this morning, Manny. We're not going alone, buddy. These are the professionals. We're gonna find a track, Manny. We're gonna find some rooting or where they cut the trees with their tusk. And that's where we're gonna put these guys on. They're gonna smell them up, bay them, and then that's where your spears come in, Manny. It's just you and the hog then. Okay, give me a, like a breakdown on how this is gonna work. Tell me more about the dogs, uh, how, how the whole plan goes, their personality. Okay, well we got a couple that, are, that we call track dogs, Manny, and you put them directly on the sign, whatever sign you found, uh, where they cut the tree, where they rooted, where you found the track, and they go in there and smell them up and, and start baying. But then we have some more, and we call those bay dogs, and they're helper dogs, and they're not quite have the nose that the other one has, we put them on we put those on there and then they help them keep them contained until we get there and then that's where me and you come along okay so uh, they don't bark all the time no my dogs are silent the only time you hear them barking unless they have them bayed so we don't hear them barking nothing's happening right so we don't make a move till you hear them is that that's how it goes yep we when we start hearing them bark that's when me and you go in and then we gotta like find out where to sound how far they're gonna oh yeah and uh we have a little technology too. Do we have to get there fast or? Uh, no, because my dogs don't catch. They're just bay dogs, but so they usually don't get injured a lot because they're, they're just bay. They stand back and they bay. They don't get really close. Right, so they're smart. They like run up to it and they back off, run right, up to it. Right. And if the boar takes off running, they'll surround them again. Yep. And kind of like they keep them in an area till we get there. And right. then, then we have to deal with them once we get there. Yeah, and then that's and when the dealing comes. Yeah, I mean, we're not as fast as the dogs. And, or the know, hog. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> the boar is incredibly fast, I know, I know that. I bet these dogs, each one has a great story, uh, different personalities. Can you introduce me to your dogs and tell me about them? Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's get them out and then I can show you sure, them too. Sure. This one is Rufus. We raised him from a puppy, Manny. Um, he come out of two leopard dogs, is what he come out of. How, do you pick him by blood or personality? I mean, how do you know if he's going to be a good uh, dog? You know, because he looks apart, but how do you test him to see if they have the ability? Or? Uh, you can watch them when they're puppies and kind of tell their personalities when they're, when they're little. But blood always helps on any kind of animal. Um, and then you just train them. You know, they actually, you don't really train them. All you do is take them and show them, and they train themselves. You just have to keep them in the woods long enough. Do they learn from the other dogs? Uh, yeah, yeah. They learn from the other dogs, and they some a lot of it's natural. They know what to do. They were bred for this, you know. They love it. Um, yeah, this is their, their whole life. This is the highlight of their life. Oh yeah. This is like a uh, party time for them. Yeah. Uh, when you put them on the ground, they're ready to do their job. They are ready. But this is one of the this is one of our track dogs. This is one of them we put out first and put on one of the tracks. 
This is Sandy. I actually didn't raise her. I got her from one of my friends. And uh, she got in a hog accident, Manny. Uh, she got a little too close one day, and um, she lost her leg, Manny. She's three-legged. Uh, but you that, know, that doesn't make me feel any more comfortable. It doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> but she, uh, she, she still travels a lot, gets around fine, and she just loves her job. And I would hate to retire her now because she loves it so much. I mean, she's very effective, huh? Oh, yeah. She's sweet. Yeah. And I mean, she, I, I, I good at her job, finding the hogs oh, yeah. and all that. Yeah. Her and that one I just brought out are the two best ones I have about finding them. Wow. Yeah. By the way, later on in the show, we're going to give you God's Country Outfitters contact information so you may go on a wild boar hunt with these professionals. Get ready to run through the swamps of Florida. I am hunting wild boar with a medieval trident and real danger is everywhere. And I have three spears blocking his attack, so that'll give me more protection than his death in the swamp. This is a monster, monster. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did the gun fall out? No. I got Manny in the back. With his spear, we're going to kill wild boar. These are my spears. I make these, I design them. This is a trident spear. This is an incredible, incredible hunting equipment. The power that this thing has is three spears going in at one time. It really puts a stopping on any wild boar you hit with them. Uh, this is drilled in here. This is running there and welded. This is three quarters of an inch, solid stainless steel. And this is red oak. This is made out of red oak. It's really strong wood because you don't want this breaking on you in the middle of a fight with a wild boar or you can get annihilated. And this one here is seven eighths thick. This is even thicker. This is a Viking style uh, spear. It was used for hunting and also uh, Viking war spear. They used to hook the enemy shield with this kind of stuff. But when you're hunting boar, this keeps the spear from going any deeper and it'll stop the boar right here so he doesn't slide up your spear and get you. That's the design for this is. And this one, of course, it has it already in here. Uh, this is also, when you throw it, you gotta understand it's like a, a shotgun. It's three spears being thrown at one time. They have 11 inches of penetration, each one of them. So when that hits, this one holds it here, another one here, it kind of immobilizes uh, the hog. Um, this is new, but I really, really like the way this one works. Let's do it, man. Sure, sure. That looks like fresh dirt on that tree. See it? That's where that hog was last night. They itch so, herself all the time. So if the hog goes this way, that way, he's just gonna zigzag, zigzag. Wherever he smells, that's where I go because you know, some people try to show their dogs what way to go. They have a lot better nose than what we have. As we follow RT into the forest, the dogs are barking like crazy. They are on a hog. And we need to get there fast. But we also need to be careful in this thick brush. We could be charged at any time, and a mad hog can inflict terrible wounds. The dogs have a beautiful jet black wild boar bait. They are keeping this powerful and dangerous beast busy. I'm moving closer and get more than I bargained for. The boar sees me and decides to make an example out of me. But my trident is more than he can handle and he knows it. Okay. I ain't leaving you. I ain't leaving you. <laughs> if I did not have this trident, that boar would have knocked me down and tried to kill me. We keep moving to stay up with the dogs. When RT spots a giant water moccasin. With the dogs still chasing this wild boar, I take a few minutes to examine this incredible snake. Manny, we got the dogs baying behind us. And Look you're out. catching snakes. Manny. 
Manny, we got enough danger, man. This, this is, this is. We got good. video on him. Yeah, we got video on him. Huge water moccasin here. That guy's gigantic. Oh man, he don't get bit, please. Okay, guys. There we go. This is death in the swamp. This is a monster, monster moccasin. Let me get out of his way. Okay, let's go. Let's let's go hunting before. Let's go. Get a bit. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Okay, man. So keep going deeper. The hawk's charging the dogs. He's charged you one time. It's man. Just, yeah, he scared the daylights out of me. I was locked on him, ready to go. But I, I got in a defensive, not in a hunt position. Right there, I was just protecting my life yeah. at that moment. And then he took off too fast before I could get a hit on him. But then they were going through here. What a large water moccasin, oh. man. I couldn't believe it. We're yeah. walking over there. So, we're, you know, you're walking through this stuff, chasing a boar hog, and you step on one of those, and you're done. Man, this would be nothing compared to that, what that would do. Man. All right, well, they're deep in there right now. Well, let, let's let's see if we can, you know how to get around to them? Yeah, I can think we can go a, another way around and it's okay, not so swampy. Okay, let's go, let's go. We, All right. We're losing time. They got him baited up again. I think it's quicker to go this way around. Here. Come on. Come on. Go. Right there. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did the gun fall out? No. no I got I have just met with a full charge of an enraged wild boar. The only thing between us was my trident, and that boar knew better. He could tell it was dangerous. Now we have to keep moving. Find that boar again and get within spear range. They got him baited up again. I think it's quicker to go this way around. Another thing about this trident, if I have a charging wild boar, I can get in a stand like this and I have three spears blocking his attack. So that'll give me more protection. He may get by the other spear, but he's gonna have a lot harder time getting by these three. So either you can push him off or stick him and stop him. I understand a wild boar comes at incredible fast speed. He's got power, he can knock you down. Anything can happen. If he knocks me down, he can tear me up once he's got me on the ground. So the idea is to make sure I got good footing and I can block him. I'd rather get behind a tree and use as a shield as he comes around, stop him right there. You don't want to come straight on in a straight line. I'd rather have him have to make a turn. That gives him that extra second that I need. But if he's in the middle, I gotta take it any which way it comes. He's a lot faster than me, so I really can't get away from him. Manny, they got him baited up again. I think it's quicker to go this way around. I'm out of air. I hope I have energy to fight him. I hope he's out of air too. Yeah. <laughs> Here. Come on, come on, go. Go, go, go. This wild boar is moving so fast. We decide to take the trucks and loop around to the other side of them to see if I can get within spear range. I got Manny in the back with his spear. We're going to kill wild boar. I hear him barking. They, uh, they got him bait up over there. You're wondering while well, Al Roberts is following me through the woods with another spear. Al is a PH. He is one of the most experienced hunters in North America. If I run into trouble, anything happens, he can cover me. If I'm getting tore up by a wild boar, he'll step in and stick a spear into him. Or if I'm getting one down, he'll pass one to me so I can spear them. It may take two or three spears to stop a wild boar. They're very tough and very hard to kill. You rarely kill one in the first stick, in the first hit. Manny, 
think they're gonna be on the edge of this lake. Right. It's a good idea. You can fight us if you don't. We are headed straight for the swamp. This is going to get interesting. We can hear the dogs barking like crazy just ahead of us. This wild boar is really smart. He is using any terrain he can to his advantage. But walking through a swamp is easier said than done. And as we begin sinking up to our knees, a cameraman falls into a deep hole, sinking up to his waist in the mud. Right there, Robin, right there. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did the gun fall out? No. I got it. I'm on. Same man. I tried to follow a boar, but just closing the last 20 yards seems impossible. We keep sinking and he just keeps moving on. Hang on, you don't have no video on you. Hang on. Hold on. This wild boar is a very worthy opponent. Smart, brave, and fast. I am aware how dangerous he will be when I finally get close enough with my trident. But getting close enough will not be easy with this beast. They got him baited up again. I think it's quicker to go this way around. Right there, Robin, right there. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did the gun fall out? No. no I got it. I'm uh, Son of a... Matt, right here. I am in a wilderness in northern Florida. I am hunting wild boar with a spear. I am trying out my trident. My theory is three spears are better than one. And I believe if I get a hit on them, it's going to stop them cold. The wild boar has left the swamp. He ran into a creek bed down a steep ravine. We have pulled the dogs off and I went to see if I can sneak in close and ambush him. Hog comes running in there, you slip and you fall in there. But well, you're right on top of it and you can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, this is this is not such a great idea. Uh, it's a good ambush spot, but it's extremely dangerous. So well, you know I, I got you, your back. I'll keep yeah, him yeah, off of you. Yeah, if it, do not. I mean you stick him if you see he's gonna grab me. Do not let him cut me open. I'm gotcha. gonna I'm gonna go out of everything I got. You well, know? I know that, but I got your back. Listen, you just... We're already committed, so let's just let's just get set up. Let's go. Let's go. As we move down the bank of the ravine, the guides are making their way up the creek. They will try to drive the boar directly into me. But before we have a chance to get set, the boar busts out of the bushes along the bank and heads for the water. I just can't let him get away. I rush down to the water and throw my trident. It slams a boar in the side, a solid hit. I grab another spear to finish him off, and the boar charges me. I stop him with a jab. I got him, I got him. And he backs down. He turns just enough for me to deliver a deadly thrust. With my last spear, I find a heart, and it's over. That's it, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Man, Jeez. I, he, I saw him going down, and I don't know, he's gonna bolt, he's gonna bolt across the creek. And I, I, I said, let me take one good throw. It was a long throw for a trident, I hit, 
I hit him low, but I went clean right through. Well, he now, got get, down here and he spun, and he looked back at you, and yeah, he hit him. I, 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 saw, I saw I had a good hit on him. I had a good hit on him with a trident, and then I just knew I had to run. Did you see, he almost came oh, at me. Oh, he did turn. I had to push into his forehead. You know, I can't get in here. I got to get to the side. The only way to get him is in the neck. That's the only way you can really control him and throw him down. Now, he was wanting to bite us. He oh, turned, no, 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 no. Around, he gonna bite. <laughs> when he came at me right yeah, there, the trident hit him. I was like this, I get him, don't miss, don't miss. <laughs> I'm uh, glad you didn't miss. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I like my trident, and when it flew nice, and like I said, it was a low hit, but I had three spears coming at him, and one of them got him good, right down here, really nice. Yeah, it went, it went right to his jugular, but he had enough to try to bite us. Oh, no, 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 Man, it wasn't over, I, I know better, I, I gotta react right away. God, these guys got some mean honks. Holy oh, crap. This area, man. <laughs> Well, they said there's some ferocious, this is a great hawk, this is a ferocious hawk, this is a trophy hawk. i seen cutters, man. I can't tell how big they were, but when he spun, I seen cutters and I went, oh, well, let's, let's drag them out. Oh, this one, this side end is stuck, this thing going, it wasn't going nowhere. What a freaking hog. Oh, look, look at this hog. He's a stud. I knew the other one. Yeah, the other sheep oh, broke. Oh, look in at here. that cutter! I told Turn you, I seen a huge cutter. Look at that cutter! Well, oh, that yeah. one probably broke it off in a fight. Yeah, definitely. But man, look I at knew, that! I knew when you hit oh, him, I seen something. A big look, cutter. Look at that cutter there! Look at that! Oh, ho, ho. Imagine getting that in you. No, look look how far down it goes. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, I don't want that in me. I'm good on that, dude. What a cutter! What a hog! <laughs> what a Ooh. cutter! Man. Hey, let me lift up his head like this. I know why you guys are watching this show. For the same reason I'm out in these woods, because it is savage and it is wild. My trident worked perfect. I'm gonna be using it again on wild hogs, and I'll see you guys next week on Savage Wild. This week on Savage Wild, a small island in the middle of a Florida lake seems like an easy hunt. Guess again. Even with the advantage of dogs, this wild boar hunt is about to become an extreme adventure. Come back on the island. Get my spear, hurry! Oh no! Yeah, hold this one, hold this one. Hold this one, hold this one. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant, man-eating predators, deadly sharks, and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. The sun is rising over Crescent Lake in Central Florida. Today, I am hunting for wild boar on Bear Island with God's Country Outfitters. This small island in the middle of the lake is mostly heavy jungle and swamp, crawling with game, including wild boar, turkey, and even wild goats and hunting this island will be a tremendous challenge. We load up the boat and head out for Bear Island. The dogs are already excited. We are taking dogs because tracking down wild boar on this island in the dense jungle and swamps would be a nightmare without them. It's only a 15 minute boat ride from the launch ramp to the island. The lake is flat calm and RT opens up the throttle. Funny how the dogs always seem to understand what the plan is. Bear Island looms into view. And as we approach the dock, our crazy adventure is about to begin.
This island is full of wildlife. There are leopard frogs like this all over the place. So this is another food supply for the hogs and other animals that live out here. Beautiful frog, look at that. This frog is very aquatic. They're all over the land out here, but they, they that's because it's a, they gotta be near water. It's a very aquatic frog. Well, I got my crew here. We got the dogs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try to stalk one. And if we can't stalk up on him, if he smells us and runs, we're gonna put the dogs on him. You're gonna go in there, they're gonna bay him up, and you're gonna spear him. Sounds like a plan? Sounds like a plan. It I hope like, it works. <laughs> it sounds, I know one thing, it, it ain't gonna happen the way you think it's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm ready like, like this about it. There's no such thing as planning this. <laughs> no, it's, 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 all we, this hunting, the way I see it is, capitalize on the opportunity that you get. You know, we runs this way, take the high ground, you gotta think fast and up and figure out how to outsmart a hog. Are we smarter than hogs? No, I'm not. You're running after him with a trident. Don't question your intelligence at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Manny, let's get after it. My okay. crew's ready. All right, guys, this is serious business. Man. All right. Well, we're in the middle of a hunt right now, but I just picked up a baby garter snake. Nice. I better, like, put him down. It's awesome. And focus on what's going on right now. I rush to rejoin RT. And we soon spot our first wild boar. This is probably a 150 pound boar. Lightning fast and very dangerous. Hey, Manny, he's going into the pine bananas. RT and I rethink our strategy. He has to. There's no telling. He could have gone to a swamp, or he could have gone down to into the other palmetto forest. It's kind of thick in here. Yeah, yeah. You, you won't be able to see him until he's on top of you. On a small island in the middle of a lake in central Florida. I am hunting wild boar with my trident spear. This is truly the savage wild. We have just sighted a wild boar. Hey, man, he's going into the bananas. This will be a day of crashing through swamps, jungles, and forests. It is so thick in there, and there's a swamp in there, there's heavy palmetto. We've been going through there, we're not gonna be able to find them. Uh, I mean, unless we walk on top of them, we're not gonna find them. Yeah, let's uh, don't do that. Let's go get the dogs. Yeah, let's, let's get the dogs and let them find them. They can smell better than we can. And then know? we'll know where he's at. At least he won't ambush us It's bad. Right, right, the dogs are gonna let us know where he's at. If not, we're gonna get uh, clobbered in there. All right, let's go get the dogs. All right. So they just come in right through here. I seen them, the dogs come out. The hog, when we saw him, he must have got in the edge of the lake and swam, come back on the island, trying to pull a fast one on the, on the dog. Well, he's using the water to try to lose. He's trying to go in the water and lose the scent, right? Yeah. To break up the scent trail. Yes, that's high intelligence right there. All right, let's go to them. I think they're down here a little bit. Already. I am having second thoughts about this island. It is a tangled world of plants and trees of every kind, and dangerous swamps that a wild boar can hide in are everywhere. In there, but 
think he might be laying up in here? No. He, he might be on the edge. I'll come with you. Anyone? No, but I will. This is not going to be easy. To prevent the boar from heading into the forest, Al Roberts is pushing through the palmetto, hoping to drive the boar back towards us. Well, we got we got separated from Manny and other guys. They went in after the dogs. We got in, got in a big swamp, got separated. We know the dogs went this way on this island. We haven't heard them bay yet, so what we're, what we're doing is we spun back around and we're trying to cut them off and maybe we can all meet in the middle and get this hog bait up or these hogs. We don't even know how many hogs there are. We saw one. Once it got in the thick, there's no telling how many could be in here. So hopefully we can get around them and all meet in the middle. We'll see. while Al Roberts is crashing through the palmetto. I am slugging my way through the swamp, chasing a wild boar that has disappeared. And I run right into a group of wild goats. I am really tempted to take one with my spear. But I stay focused on what I came here for and keep moving. This island has some of the wildest swamps I have ever seen. And the dogs are having a rough time tracking the wild boar in the water. But my guide, RT, knows how to hunt these island boar. And I put my faith in his experience. We're just getting started. Manny, is this what y'all call savage and wild? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at this uh, swamp out here. This is, this, is a, a, this is the real swamp right here. Yeah, this is where they live. Man. Yeah, they live where nobody wants to go. Yeah. There's nothing like hunting wild boars and professional guides. If you want to get an awesome wild boar, I recommend God's Country Outfitters. And later on in the show, we're going to have the contact information so you can get your own boar hunt. I am hunting wild boar with my trident spear, making my way through the swamps and forest of a small island in central Florida. We have spotted one wild boar but I have spent most of the afternoon chasing a shadow. So, after carefully considering our options, we are now switching to plan B. Come back on the island. Right now we're gonna get ready, we're gonna get all our equipment ready. We're gonna go with a boat and take a cruise around the island and search to see if we can spot any of them. There's some big vicious boars on this island. If we see some, we're gonna get the dogs, put the dogs on them and see if we can have the dogs bay them up and then I'm gonna come in and try to get a kill shot on them. We have one catch dog on the boat, but we're not gonna use them. We're just gonna use the bay dogs. Now the bay dogs will chase them, they won't catch them. They'll let me know where he's hiding, they'll bark at him, they'll surround them and help me find him. He's free running. It is extremely dangerous to approach a hog that is bayed. Because when he's bayed up like that, he can run anywhere, he can attack anybody. He's, you know, he's on, on a defensive. He's on the attack mode. So to me, that is one of the most dangerous situations. I gotta figure out how I can get close enough to throw my spear and get out, get out of the way. These are the trail dogs. These are the ones that bay, the thing that sense of smell, that's their thing. The catch dog doesn't smell that good. He can only catch. So normally what hunters would do, they use these guys to find them, and they use the catch dog. But I'm the catch dog this time. You be next to me and you carry that other spear. Okay, all right. So we got double protection. I hope we see one. Usually this time of day they lay up on the edge of the bank like that because uh, it was cool, real cool this morning. They're getting some sun, you know, closer to the water. So 
If we see one, we'll just put the dogs right on him. And It'll just... save us hours of letting the dogs run around the woods and trying to find one. If we yep. see one, we can get the dogs out quicker, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. The shoreline of this island is a maze of small canals and heavy vegetation. Lots of places for a wild boar to hide or escape. We move as close to the shore as possible and cruise very slowly while we watch for any sign of wild boar. The dogs are waiting for their turn to jump over the side and track down a boar, but they will have to be patient. We shut down the engines and I guide the boat through the shallows while I scan the jungle at the water's edge for any sign of movement. Suddenly, my heart is pounding. Up ahead, neck deep in the water, a wild boar has spotted us and is trying to remain undetected. Right now, oh, he's hiding in here. There's a hog hiding in here. I don't know how big he is. He's hiding in here. I'm waiting for backup. I'm gonna go in on him. I might be able to get a throw. I'm not even to throw the dogs in unless I have to. I, I think I got him right in here. The, he's hiding in the hyacinths. He's in the water hiding and he's cooling off again. This is a smart hog. It is slowly moving deeper into the water hyacinth that is so dense you can barely see anything in it. My eyes are straining trying to look into it. But somehow I managed to spot him. I want to make sure I hit him solidly with my trident spear. I nailed the boar in the side, and the fight is on. There is no doubt I am gonna need another spear. I got him. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, let me see a spear. But I can't let go of the trident because the boar is trying to kill me. Artie hands me another spear. I am doing everything I can to keep him away from me with the trident, but my hands are full. This wild boar is not under control and this could get out of hand in a heartbeat. After chasing wild boar on this jungle island in central Florida, we have decided to use small boats to patrol the shoreline. And luckily, we have spotted a wild boar hiding in the swamp. As I approach closer, the boar disappears into the thick water plants giving me the chance to hit him solidly with my trident spear. Come on, spear! Come on, spear! Get the dog out of here! Get the dog out of here! Get my other spear! Get my other spear! The crew doesn't understand why I can't let go of the trident. Get my other spear! Hurry! Oh, no! Yeah, hold this one! Hold this one! The hog is trying to get to me and pay me back with a vengeance. This one! Finally, RT grabs a handle of the trident, allowing me to finish the boar off with a thrust to the heart. Get in front of me, get in front of me, the trident. And it's over. I have taken a wild boar on this small jungle island in the middle of this lake. This was a great hunt and a crazy adventure. Man, I couldn't see. You know, that thing I saw, I know he ran in, ran in here. I don't know if it's the same one, it might be another one. He was in this Hyson's, and I go, oh, I love the water. No, I can't see, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking between the weeds like this, and it looks like this right here. See that fuzz? It's just everywhere in here. So I'm looking and looking, and then all of a sudden, I see, I start seeing a little bit of, I think that's him, that's him, and I hit him from behind. I'd rather hit him from here. I stuck him from behind, he turned on me, he was calling back at me. Sorry, I'm yelling at you. Man, get that spear. He don't understand. Don't get the spear. Turn. Hold, hold this one so I can stick another one in him. 
If I don't, he's gonna get me with these babies here. You know. He's got nice teeth. Yeah, right? I couldn't get through these weeds, man. I don't know how he, how he was in here. This, uh, th th these animals are masters of disguise. They're highly intelligent. He knows that in here he was safe. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's not used to anybody coming in here. The thing's gonna get him in here is an alligator, maybe. Yeah. You know, but he's easing his way through this stuff, and he's so slow, and you can barely see where he's going. I knew someone here, and I kept looking and looking. I just didn't want to step into him where he's gonna get me. I had to see him before he got a hold of me. So this is a very, very that's uh, a difficult situation. This is a beautiful boar too, man. Look at the, look at the color on him. He's black and he's got the gristle. This is very uh, similar to the European boar. Yeah. This style right here. A gorgeous animal. Uh, let me so you can show him. This is getting in there with it, Manny. Uh, no, this is a what we call hand-to-hand -hand battle. I don't like it, Manny. I'm gonna leave that up to you. I, you know, I like it until I, I, I start to panic in a situation like this, especially when he, I turn him, he's trying to come at me, and I got, I'm thinking, no, no, I, I had this, see, right here, and I had to push him away. I says, don't push backwards because he'll pull out front. You gotta turn him, keep going in front of him, and keep poking in front of him so you can keep backing him, backing him, backing him, or he'll get you. Man, he's a nice one. Super. Well, congratulations. I'm gonna leave all this, the rest of them up to you. I'm done spearing with you. No, dude, I, 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 I need your help, man. Don't abandon me because I don't know what's gonna happen. It, it never turns out the way it happened. First of all, I couldn't even tell what part of the body was hitting. I had no idea. I could see a little bit of fur, and I said, now or never, you get any closer, he's gonna turn on me. So I had to, I could barely see a little bit of piece of fur in the water right there. His head, his, he's got his nose, he's squatted down in the water, hiding. See, feel the knob, we'll hide in the bushes. You will walk 10 feet away. He will move and let you walk on by. Well, let's get this thing in the boat if we can. If we can. I don't know if we can. Man, I'm one proud hunter today. I'm happy, happy. Look at this magnificent. Right now, I'm just gonna enjoy my trophy. This is a, what I consider a gorgeous, gorgeous boar, man. See the old, uh, the fur, the black, the silver tips on them. Blonde tips, I love this. This is all I could see, was a little bit of this fur, a little patch like that, that's all I could see. I knew he was there, I just couldn't get any closer to see anything better, because he's gonna take off or, or, or turn on me real quick. I was like, I had the, 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 the trident right in front of me, and that's all I could see. I mean, it basically, it's like this fuss is in there, so he blends right into this, it's got all that floating vegetation, it's like an alligator hiding in there. That's what I was like. And man, he was like, uh, when I hit him with the trident, he was like, ah. <laughs> I couldn't get over. But this is one awesome, awesome boar. I'm really happy about him. I feel like a successful hunter today. I hear him, I hear him, I hear him, I hear him. It's your time, buddy. The big dogs are baying up. I can hear them. They're barking away over there. We're on our way. There's a wild boar right there. A few feet in front of us. He's gonna come at me like a missile any minute. You have to keep him off of you. He is gonna try to kill you. Manny is Manny, y'all. Keep watching this. I got one window of opportunity and I said, don't miss. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. Another beautiful day in the North Florida woods. A great day for boar hunting. Welcome to Savage Wild. Today I'm hunting with the A-Team, God's Country Outfitters. Artie, what's the plan today? Well, we got the bay dogs today, Manny. 
We're gonna find the track, put the bay dogs on them. They're gonna go sniff them out, bay them up. And we're not using a catch dog today, Manny. You're the catch dog. You and the trident. I've seen you take a couple hogs with that trident. I think that that's the best spear you have. What do you, what's your opinion? I think for hand-to-hand -hand combat with a wild boar, or for tossing is the best. It's, it's three spears in one, so I have more of a defense. And if I throw, I got three spears coming at him. It's like a shotgun versus a rifle. I feel comfortable behind you with your other spear when you have that in your hands, buddy. I feel better, but I never feel really comfortable. I, I am not, I like doing this, but I'm not comfortable doing it. It's an adventure. I love the, the hunt, but this is nerve wracking, chaotic, dangerous. It's probably the most dangerous thing I do. I do a lot of dangerous things, but this wild boar hunting is extremely dangerous. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat, chaos the whole time, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. Man, all right, let's, let's get our yeah, bay dogs on the ground and let's yeah, go. Let's, uh, let's, let's get going. I've been hunting wild boar yeah. for a long time. We use dogs is the most successful way. There's three kinds of dogs that we use. We use a track dog, a bay dog, and a catch dog. Well, our catch dog usually is a bulldog. He has protective gear on him, Kevlar vest, collars, because he's the one actually that goes in there and catches the hog and holds him. Well, today, Manny is the catch dog. It's so dangerous. It's chaotic. Manny's gonna go in there with the bay dogs, baying him, and spear this hog. No catch dog on him, none. I. I don't understand how he does it. Manny's, Manny is Manny, y'all. Keep watching this. Just to let you know how dangerous hunting wild boars with a spear is, look at this. This happened the other days. I speared a wild boar and he was biting and gnawing at this. Now this is what it's doing to the wood. Imagine if you get your bone <laughs> tearing up like that. You have to keep him off of you. He is smart. He is going to try to kill you. There's no way around it. In case I run into a dangerous situation, I get torn up by wild boar, I'm being taken down. Al Roberts is a professional PH. He really knows a lot about hunting. He's going to step in and, into, and stop the attack. He's gonna come in with the other spears and back me up and finish it off. Let's say worst case scenario, Manny gets knocked into the ground and a boar is just ripping him apart. Then I have to step in and get this hog off of Manny so it doesn't kill him. Another situation will be Manny needs another spear. He gets tried in a hog. I'm there with these extra spears to give him another one. Put another spear in this hog, contain him, take him out. Another reason that I'm right in the middle of all this is to protect the cameraman. These cameramen are completely helpless while they're shooting this. If this hog gets them down and starts ripping them apart, I have to get in there, get the hog off of them, and kill the hog. I hear him. I hear him. I hear him. I hear him. It's your time, buddy. <laughs> you hear him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're barking big time up ahead. Okay. Let's go. Uh... I think it would be better. I don't know. Let's look here. They're a long ways away. Yeah, GPS? Yeah. 200 and something yards, man. We're gonna be out of breath by the time we get there. Okay. The bay dogs are baying up. I can hear them. They're barking away over there. It's on a bay. We're on our way. They gotta be just ahead. They're loud, loud. Look at them. I see him right here. Manny, he's chasing them dogs all around. 
he's a mean one. Yeah, yeah, I know, I can see that. He's big up, he looks like he's on the opposite side of Kika. Can't see tall from here. Okay, I got a better look. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see him. Man, he's a big one. He's a big one, right over there. We are hot on the trail of a wild boar. Getting close to him, even with dogs, is tricky. He wants to keep moving, and he is down a steep ravine wall following a creek. Just gonna have to bust through it. We're just gonna bust right through this stuff. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, but there's no uh, Well, look, we got like a straight drop off here. We're gonna drop, I don't know how many feet. That's about a 50 foot drop. It's going right beneath us. It's right there. We're yeah. Gonna, we we need to go down, down and find a crossing, though. We need to find a crossing. Come on, come on. Down there. We gotta get down there. He's right below us with a 50 foot straight down. No, this is a bad deal. Manny? Manny, I don't know, man. I'm getting the cameras down there. Oh, you ain't got a good view. Uh, I, I think it's dumb, man. This is, man, it's taking too much of a chance. If you want to go down right there, let's just, let's just get down here and get to the flat bottom. I don't like this hill. We okay. lose somebody, somebody falls down this hill, you're right in the hog's lap. Right. That's a bad idea. Let's get right. around him. Manny, come on, let's come go on, around. Man. Let's get around him. Let's get around let's him. Let's get on some flatter ground. Those dogs ain't going to let that hog go nowhere. Let's get out of this bad spot here. Al is right. What we are doing is dangerous enough without tumbling down a ravine into a hungry hog's lap. Come on, come on, come on, let's get around him. There he comes. Let me get in here. Cross right here. And I can fire from over Yeah, let's cross right here. Cross on that log. Let's get around on him. We make our way along the creek, hoping to close the distance. But getting close to this enraged hog is not something you take lightly. Actually, you're coming my way. Do I throw him back now? Throw him back. He's running. He's running back. He's going up to him. Here he comes. Here he comes. I'd rather that hog come down here and fight us oh, yeah, on the no, front ground I, I, I than, to... than, than us go to him up there. Right, no, no, I, I don't want to go up there. He's got the upper ground on me up there. If I go up there, he's got the upper ground. The hog manages to climb out of the ravine and heads into dense forest. Quicker! Stay put! Stay put! Quicker! Stay put! Stay there with you! Quicker! I see him! This is chaos, man. I'm exhausted. He didn't come this way towards us. He went up that uh, hill, up the bank of this creek. He just went up the bank of this creek. I don't even know where he's up there right now. This is gonna be, uh, this is turning into a very difficult situation. The ideal situation, I'm gonna come this way. I had an opening shot right here. Now he's gonna go into heavy brush. This is not good for me. All right, Manny. We had a good clear shot on him. It was just too steep. Yeah. It was too dangerous. He knew we had the advantage yeah. on him. On the other side, he had the advantage. Right. Well, so, he knows. He's got us tired now. Now he's in the thick, thick bushes. It's Great. gonna be very dangerous. Very dangerous. Great. That's what we got here. Remember, I said this is chaos and close, close combat. That's what we're doing right now.
I know you're dying to get in the middle of this action. Don't worry. Later on the show, I'm going to give you the contact information to God's Country Outfitters. All right, Manny. We had a good clear shot on him. It was just too steep. It was too dangerous. This is not the situation that I like. We had him in that somewhat open creek bottom, hoping that he would come down. We'd be able to take him in the open. He went right back up the steep side, which we couldn't get onto him because that is a little too dangerous. And now he's in the thick nasty. It's going to get real ugly now. It's, this is not good. We're not have good a hard for, time if it's really thick. I'm not going to be able to throw this. Yeah, not good We're for spear. Gonna have spears. to get the other spear. Cause this will catch all the bushes. Ahmed is in thick brush right now, baby. See that right in front of you? That's messed yeah. up. He's in. Well, let's see if we can see him. Well, let's go. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Come on, man. Let's get him here. We should probably stay together. You've got a bull We're going to have to be quiet. And big bushes and a break. Be very quiet in here, y'all. This is exactly what we wanted to avoid. Trying to hunt a wild boar in a super tangled thick forest. This is when the wild boar is most dangerous. There's the hog right there. There's the hog. The situation's not good, man. It's not a good situation. Trying to get the dog. You got him stop again right there, Manny. Let's just keep, keep creeping to him. I can't throw this in here. I can only stick them. Look, it'll catch everything. It's full of briars. Man. Orange. When I approach, we will only be a few feet apart. I might use my other spear right now. He's into some heavy, heavy brushes. He's very close to me right now. So I may use my other spear. He's right in front of the dogs, Manny. Right. I know, I, can't, I don't even have a clean throw, man. I don't think I'd throw in there. You can't throw in this. There ain't nothing we can do in here. He's less than 10 yards from us. We can get to where them dogs are at. We have it. There's a wild boar right there. A few feet in front of us. I can't see him. He's going to come at me like a missile any minute. And I got to be ready. I am exhausted. Manny, it's too thick in there. I don't feel safe for you, buddy. I don't feel safe either. Hang on. Let's see if if he over. charges you, you can get him, though. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to come. Okay. We got to get this hog to bust out of here. The dogs are working, working, working. He's just sitting there resting. They're wearing out. Before you know it, it's going to be us and him with no dogs at all. We got to get him to bust out of this to where we can get to him. We got to do something. We can't just keep sitting here. He's coming. He moved, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the hog moves again. And we push our way through the forest to catch back up. And soon, we are once again dangerously close to a furious wild boar. He's right there, Robin. He's behind you. The dogs are playing a game of chicken with this boar. He could kill any of them if he catches them just right with a tusk. It's too tight and dense. Hey, hey, you better be paying attention. I'm walking there. He's coming. He's looking right at you. I'm walking there. Knock him off like a head up. We need to work our way around for a better angle. We run that hog through thicket after thicket. We can't get in there close enough to him. Manny can't throw a spear at him. You can't hardly even see him. Just keep running him and running him until we get to a spot where we can actually get into him and kill him. It ain't easy. I'm out of here. He's making it difficult. He's making it difficult. He's making it very difficult. Get out of here! 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 Get out of
He's making it difficult. He's making it difficult. We've run that hog through thicket after thicket. We can't get in there close enough to him. Manny can't throw a spear at him. You can't hardly even see him. Just keep running him and running him until we get to a spot where we can actually get into him and kill him. It ain't easy. Manny, we thought that stuff was thick. Nothing but vines. Edge of the swamp. Let's go to him. And then the hog stopped running and stands his ground. This may give me my chance to get within spear range. I see my chance. And I take it. My trident hits the boar perfectly. And as I rush to grab the next spear, the boar decides to pay me back, charging at me. But I am ready for him. And stop him cold with another spear. Come home, come home, come home. Hell, hell, get him in the heart, get him in the heart. I finish him off quickly with my last spear. Oh, oh. That was a good hit. Woo. Good. Good shot, Manny. Good shot. We were safe on the dogs and everything. I need a bag of water. <laughs> that was exhausting, Manny. <laughs> we, we bait him in the creek and I said, oh, we got it. It was too steep. He had the upper edge and the upper edge and then he took us through. He took us through hell. I don't have. That was all adrenaline. I don't have a drop of energy left in me. Nothing. I'm dehydrated. I feel like Edo's right now. This is a huge boar hog, man. He's smart. He must have been tangled with dogs at some time in his life because he is elusive. He knows how to get away from dogs. Look at the stuff he was inside of, man. That trident really worked on him, Manny. Oh, the trident, what it does, it slows him down. You see, he came right at me. I got him right to the mouth you know the, i i, I want to get him in the neck to stop him right and all like all i had was a straight on shot and I, he was coming for me i had to do something quick i, to, I told cameron the guy hey hey look out look out he's coming <laughs> <laughs> he's coming right out. he went around this side i go he's coming right out i oh, oh, got the spear come on get me <laughs> no to me it's it's terrifying once i hit him okay i got him but now he's gonna attack <sighs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Good job, Manny. Good job. I, my ideal spot is to hit him in the neck. And I hit him straight on. I mean, it's either take him or he's going to take me. No, no, when he's coming, it's panic when the hog is coming at you. Even though this thing's slow, this is a very fast creature, but this trident hanging off the side puts a slowdown on him. Look at this trident out here. Two spikes went in him. And all this is hanging off him. Another spear, he would have took off 100 miles an hour. I mean, busting through the forest. But due to the fact that I hit him with... Uh, my awesome trident, he went down right there. He slowed down, he couldn't get away, and then he turned on me right there. You know, he knew that, he knew that, was, that, that was his last throw. So he had to attack. Come home, come home, come home. Yeah, last night I was sharpening the trident to make sure it was working good. The skin on these boars is so tough, so difficult to penetrate. This is armor, as you see fur, but underneath the fur, there's armor. And then massive muscles and incredible intelligence right here. When you're hunting wild boar, it ain't over till it's over. You know, when you stick them, it ain't over. It, it could turn into a worse situation right off the bat. It ends when he dies. That's when the danger is over. That's when you can relax, calm down, and catch your breath. Thought these spears don't come out, do they? Huh? No, are you gonna pull? Yeah. I'm pulling about 10 pounds. Yeah, I need you to pull about 200 pounds. You help me. I think I'm more tired than you. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was strong until yeah. I hooked up with this guy. <laughs> if you kill funny. a buffalo in the woods, he will drag it out for you. He's an incredible <laughs> game dragger. He's an incredible Thanks, game baby. dragger, man. <laughs> Total chaos. Hand to hand combat with a wild boar in one of the thickest woods I've ever crashed through. My try to improve this stuff again as the greatest wild boar stopper I've ever used. I'll see you next week on Savage Wild. All right, let's go. Let's go get the truck. Oh. Wait up.
I gotta get to some water pretty quick. These dogs don't get too close. They stand far away and they go, whoo, 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 and they run back when the hawk comes out. Whoo, whoo, they do that. They don't en engage them in a fight. They're smart. And fishing at night for huge long nose gar, surrounded by danger. Get me out of here. What? Almost drowned, man. Almost. Look at that needle like teeth on this fish. Long nose gar are lightning fast and powerful. The second largest predator in this river. But the number one predator will also be watching us. They own this world at night. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. is falling on a North Florida river that is so wild. You would think twice of us swimming here in the daytime, much less at night. But that is exactly why I'm here. We are all aware how dangerous this is. But it feels like we are being drawn into the darkness by a powerful force. So we keep our mind on tonight's mission to locate and hand catch Long Nose Guard. My cameraman Cueta and I have explored these waters at night many times, but it's always risky. Tonight, I'm going upriver in one of the most savage and wild rivers that I know. It is one of the most favorite places that I have on earth. This place is full of alligators, it's full of fish, it's full of water moccasins, it's high adventure and danger everywhere. But tonight, I am hand fishing. I am particularly looking for long nose gars. The long nose gar is a powerful, massive, incredible game fish. It is like a bronze fish. It is armored bronze, it is slimy, hard to hold, incredibly fast and agile. And I'm gonna be going at them at night with lights. I'm gonna try to confuse them with the lights and get close enough to grab them. It is an incredibly challenging adventure to do this. This river feels so ancient to me. That is part of the mystery of this place and why I love it so much. Hey, Manny, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ease up here and on these corners, you know, where these curves are in this river, that water kind of just spins and moves slower. And those gar will lay up there and they wait till the fish come out and they come out and smack them. Yeah, so. they're, they're not heavy everywhere. They got their favorite spots right. they're hanging out in. And that's why I gotta find, you know. Yeah, there's a few corners up here on this river I know that always hold them. So that's usually where we can find some pretty good ones. Usually I gotta go from hole to hole because I may go into one hole, they scatter, and then they run into another hole. They go up and down a uh, creek, up and down current. If a big hairy guy was chasing me, I'd probably scatter too, brother. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just keeping it real. I gotta be man. stealthy. Stealthy is the name. Uh, there's a lot of, the water is high and the forest is flooded everywhere, so they could be inside the vegetation. Yeah, we've had like a month of solid rain, so our, our water is up like four feet on this river, all the aquifers rain, so the spring is pumping water. Our, look at our current, it's ripping right now. to catch fish, boat fishing, rod and reel, uh, spear fishing. I like them all, but I prefer hand fishing. Hand fishing to me is the most challenging, the most demanding. I mean, I'm out here in the middle of the night and the water's infested with alligators. There's water moccasins, catching fish that swim in midwater. Unlike noodling where they go in a hole. 
Most of the fish you're gonna be catching are long nose cars, which they're fast and elusive, and I gotta catch them in mid-water. So I'm putting all of me to the test. I gotta watch behind me, make sure I don't get attacked by an alligator when I'm struggling with the fish. I gotta be alert, I gotta make sure my cameraman quit this alert, and this is gonna be exciting. This is high adventure, maximum high adventure. Man, what a beautiful night. Yeah, it is incredible tonight. Wow. Couldn't ask for better weather either. Right now we're about 30 minutes before complete sundown and it's really dark. Um, we're actually only maybe 10, 15 minutes from where we're gonna stop at. What we're doing is we came all the way up river. The current is ripping right now. We're, we're gonna get up river, we'll drop Manny off, and we'll ease down the river with him, you know, back off of him a little ways so that he can, you know, get up on the fish without us spooking him. And we're just gonna follow him down river so he doesn't have to fight this current the whole way. He's gonna get into so many fish, you know, going six, seven miles down this river in the middle of the night. There's no telling what the heck he's gonna run into. I mean, it, who knows? And with Manny, if it's in there, he's gonna find it. Tonight will be exciting, challenging, and extremely dangerous. But for me, this is the ultimate fishing high, and Monster Gar are out there. preparing to explore one of North Florida's wildest sections of river. I have come here to catch huge long nose gar with only my hands and a flashlight. Adventure and danger are both alive and well in this eerie world that few humans ever see. Manny, this is a good spot right here. See how this water slows down in this curve? It slows down, you got all that cover right there, those gar will just lay up underneath it. And you got a double bend on the river here. I've seen some giants in there. I can guarantee you we'll get into some big ones in there. We gotta find uh, the deep spot where the water swirls. Exactly, in. exactly. That's what these two corners that we just came through, they have some really deep 20, 25 foot holes. You saw one cruising over the show. Yeah, I saw one a while way, ago yeah. cruising uh, by That's us. a good sign. Well, that's we're seeing them already, you know. All right, Manny, it's go time. Keep your shit on. This is where we're stopping. Well, I'm glad uh, Quint is already dressed. He's usually it takes him longer with all the camera equipment. Make sure everything's working. Actually, it is spooky out here at night. It is more dangerous, but it's an advantage for me because uh, when you put a light on a fish or a gar, he doesn't see you coming. The light confuses the fish and then it gives me a chance to sneak up on him. In broad daylight, the only way I can grab a gar is if he's swimming through heavy weeds and he doesn't see my hands coming. So I have to ambush him. But at night, it gives me more room to ambush the fish. So it is an advantage. So it is the best time to do it, but it's also, you're putting yourself at more danger at more risk. The lights on my camera are very powerful LED lights. Uh, they serve two purposes. One is to light the scene, and the other is to help blind the fish when Manny is uh, approaching it, so it makes it a little bit easier for him to catch it. Okay, these bugs are swarming in the air we breathe. So when we breathe up our snorkel, we just sort of in. <coughs> so on top of everything else, we have to deal with that. But you know, that's part of it, you know. Uh, you wanna catch fish, you gotta be in the wilderness. That's part of it, you know. Tonight, there is no moon. It is pitch black all around us. Our lights are powerful, but can only show us fleeting glimpses of this dark world. Moments into our dive, I spot a familiar sight on the bottom. Resting on a log, 
a giant Blocastomus. The same sucker fish you buy for your aquarium, only supersized. Will be a good warm up for my hand catching skills. This here is a huge Blocastomus. This is an alien species. He's heavily armored, he's got spikes everywhere. If you don't have gloves and you grab him, he will cut your hand up. I mean, he's not a pretty fish. Look at the underneath, look at his mouth. He's very uh, tough, very hard. It's like made out of su super material. But anyways, this is a nice fish, nice Blocastomus, but I'm gonna keep looking for, I'm gonna let him go, keep looking for gars. As I drift with the current and scan with my flashlight, I suddenly spot the cigar shape of a long nosed gar cruising along below me. I keep the light on the gar's eyes. This makes it impossible for him to see me. And at the last moment, I drop the flashlight and grab the gar with both hands by the long bill filled with needle sharp teeth. My first long nose gar of the night. I feel good when I'm catching one of these. Look at that, his bill is just like a, it's, it's like a game fish, like a sailfish in the ocean. But if you look at him, the way he's built, so streamlined, so powerful, and so quick. He's about among the fastest fish probably in this river right here. Look at that. It's probably the fastest guard there is. Bronzy looking at, look at that. Let me show the other part. Let me see if I can get his, look at his teeth. Yeah, I don't want to get my finger caught in his mouth. I gotta be real careful. But this fish, wow. Okay, I'm gonna put him back and let him go carefully get my hands out of there. And to me, that is one of most, my most favorite challenges to hand catch a fish, like any fish by hand, but especially a long nose gar. It is an incredible challenge. This is fishing at its finest. It is an art. This is high adventure. You have no idea what it feels like to catch a fish like that by hand. It is a pitch black moonless night. I am exploring a wild Florida river. I'm here to catch giant long nose gar with only my hands and a flashlight. So far, I have caught a giant sucker fish and a medium sized gar. But I know out there in the dark, a giant long nose gar is lurking. And so are the muggers. This river is full of long nose gar. I know because I see them every time I come here including giants over six feet long. And that is the encounter I am hoping for. The next fish is the average size of three feet. Still a powerful fish and a challenging catch. And I nailed this one. It has taken me years to learn how to do this. It is an incredible rush to grab a fish this big in mid water. Hold it in your hands and then release it. Another beautiful gar, man. Look at this. Beautiful, man. Whoa. Oh, wow. Man, every time I grab him, I gotta hold him for a little while, let him tire for a few seconds before I lift him up because my hands can't hold him. I gotta use my whole body to hold him. At any minute, he can break loose from me. Wow. There's quite a few of them in this river. This guy is probably about three and a half feet, but they got some in here that are up to like close to six feet, man. Monsters out here. Okay, I'm gonna let this one go. I'm gonna look for some more. See if I find some, find some bigger ones. giant mat of floating weeds. 
a common sight along the shore of this river. I have never considered them dangerous, but I am about to learn a lesson I will never forget. I spot a long nose guard below me and dive down to grab it. But I miss the catch and he gets away. Already short of breath from swimming, I head up for air, only to run into the mat of weeds. And I can't break through, it must be three feet thick. I have no idea which way to swim, I am only seconds from blacking out. I am drowning and I know it. But I make it out alive. My cameraman, Quete, finally finds his way out, but he is very shook up. Quete, by my light. Get me out of here. What? I almost drowned. I almost drowned too. Got my head, where's the light? Oh God. I almost drowned. I knock this thing off my head while I get it take it off. I almost drowned, man. Almost. I, I, got, I was following this big guard, right? And he kept going under. And I'm chasing him. I'm about out of air. I'm about to ground. When I come up, I'm underneath a huge pad. I can't come up for air. I'm stuck in there. I don't know which is a way out. I drop my light in the confusion. And I'm just swimming like crazy trying to find my way out of there. I try to break my head to the pad like I've done with alligators before. I could not break through it. There's so much vegetation. It was so much vegetation, I could not break through it. Another dangerous thing about this thing, you know, you're following a fish and there's, and there's this wall on top of the surface. You chase a fish, it's pitch dark. You don't see anything, you're way in there. When you come up, you can't come up for air. Damn. Couldn't find the way out. I was out of breath and I hit this mat. This mat right here. It's gotta be two or three feet thick and I couldn't break out of it. I had to know which way to get out. So I figure, okay, I'm either gonna swim to shore or swim out to out under it. Wow. I'm gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna catch my breath, let me my body reoxygenate, get back to normal. I am not gonna make the same mistake again that I just did. I'm gonna watch out for it. But understand, this is a very dark night. When you look up, you can't see nothing. There's no bearing of any kind whatsoever. It's I got a little flashlight in front of me, and it's a dark world all around me, full of everything. There's branches, weeds, holes, current. I don't know what I'm running into. And, and in the midst of all that, I'm trying to catch a fish. Trapped under a mat of weeds, we almost pay for this mistake with our lives. Get me out of here! What? I almost drowned. Quay and I almost drowned under a pad of weeds. This time, we're already rested up. We're gonna be more careful when we go back in there. I don't ever, ever want to put myself in that situation again. Along the bank, in the heavy vegetation, a nine-foot alligator is resting on the bottom. This guy could easily tear an arm or leg off. And he will probably drown you before he let go. If he didn't swim off with you and stuff you under the bank. As we pass for an area of sand and eelgrass, I spot the shape of a monster-sized long nose gar resting just off the bottom. I carefully dive down and make my approach as stealthy as I can, keeping my light on his eyes. This is a serious fish to be grabbing a hold of. The biggest gar I have ever attempted. It feels like it's made of spring steel. 
There is no way I could hold this fish without wrapping my legs around him. I got a monster! I got a monster! I struggle to make it to shore. Trying to swim with this fish and keep my head above water is not working. This guy is at least five feet long. He's super heavy, super powerful. Incredible, incredible. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that, oh my god. Look at that. This is, they get not much bigger than this. This is a really, really, really nice Longo scar, man. This is a trophy right here. I'm enjoying the moment, man, right there. He's so powerful. I've had him for I don't know how long. He's still fighting me with everything he's got. I just want to show a good look at him. Look at his eyes and everything. The speed of this fish. Man, when I was going down on him, I, 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 I put the light, I slowly brought that. I said, don't, I'm telling myself, don't mess this one up. Don't mess this one up. You might not get another chance in. And I grabbed his, his uh, snout right there. That's the only way I can hold him. I got to hold him with snout and hold on my legs with everything I got, with both of my arms and both of my legs, it was so bad that I couldn't make it to shore. I had to have Puerto push me in because I was just, everything I could, I, I could just hold him. I could not swim and hold him at the same time. I needed to be pushed ashore. This fish, if you both hunters to put an arrow in him, it'll drag buoys, it'll drag a boat. Today, I mean tonight, but not, it's not <laughs> daytime. This was an incredible, I got three long nose scars, including a big, fat, massive one. I got a placasimus. We had an alligator encounter. We almost drowned. This has been a super, super adventurous night. I'm glad we didn't drown, because that way you can join us next week on Savage Wild. I am hunting the forest of Clouston, Florida. Tracking down a neighborhood tough guy. He's behind, he's behind the palmetto. Watch, watch, watch. Watch it. We know for a fact that this hog is not afraid of humans. We are not allowed to shoot firearms out here because of the workers in the fields. Now that I've seen this wild boar up close, he's got the big teeth. Your adrenaline's pumping, your tenses can be at any moment this damn hog is gonna charge you and eat you. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. I have come to Clouston, Florida to do battle with a medieval monster. The dogs have no control over stopping him. He just goes where he wants, when he wants. A huge wild boar that has been attacking farm workers and raiding crops. This 250 pound killer with three inch razor blades can easily ruin your day and send you to the hospital. So for this mission, I will need backup. In fact, I will need a team of professionals. This week on Savage Wild, we have our work cut out for us. There is a very dangerous animal in these woods. It's a wild boar. I know because he's chased some workers in a field nearby. So we know for a fact he's dangerous and very aggressive. I'm gonna take him with my trident. That is my gold. And I, with me, I got Orlando. He is an expert hawk hunter and he is my guide. I have Al, he's the enforcer. He's gonna watch my back. I trust him with my life. 
anything happens, he steps in. And I have Mark over here. He is an expert with the dogs. He races hog hunting dogs. And Cody, he is another expert hog hunter and he's here for support. The more experts we got, the better it is. It makes me feel better. And he's also got a spear in his hand. If you've seen us in Savage Wild boar hunting, you know how unpredictable, how dangerous it can get. Orlando, so how's it gonna go down today? Uh, Manny, I have no idea what's gonna happen here today. This uh, all started yesterday with a phone call. This hog was seen yesterday about five, 600 yards in here. He did chase some workers. So the problem is most hogs are elusive. They try to run away from people. We know for a fact that this hog is not afraid of humans. We are not allowed to shoot firearms out here because the workers in the fields, spear, trident is the way to go and you're the man for it. And I'll tell you what, I'm sure glad you're here today because we need to get this hog out of here and get these folks back to work. Yeah, but we need the, the dogs. That's where Mark comes in. My dogs got noodled two nights ago. And Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got going on? Uh, I got two 15-month-old uh, puppies we're gonna put down here. They're strictly bay. They, they're not gonna catch. They only put their mouth on them. If the hog's trying to break and run, they'll bite his butt and make it sit down or stay so man can hopefully get a good stick on him. We're gonna stalk and let the dogs out and they're gonna hopefully find them and bay them up. Well, yeah, what, what's interesting about this, this is a strip of woods. The largest organic farm in the United States is 500 yards on the other side of this strip of woods in here. Right. On the other side, you have orange groves. Right. So that hog more than likely is gonna be bedded up in this area here. It's the middle of the day. It's a good place to put the dogs. Right, he might even be up moving around a little bit because he got all this overcast. He'll be in the, in the myrtles or palmettos because they feed at nighttime and they'll go into the or organic fields and just tear the place up. I haven't seen them, but from the expression on the workers that they were telling us about this hog, <laughs> this ought to be a lot of fun. Well, when they're not yeah. scared of people, those are the most dangerous types. These hogs out here, they, they generally have a population of hogs out here. So the workers, the farmers here are used to seeing hogs. They don't go, uh, they don't get real upset when they see one. They do get rid of them. They do trap them out. But when they call you and tell you that this one particular hog is keeping the workers from going out to the fields, you know you got something. I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. Right. All right. Well, well let's let's uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's get her done. This wild boar is not only huge; he is smart and dangerous. Taking this animal with my trident will be risky business. I like getting it loud. Now he's gonna hold up in there, and I think Manny's gonna get a good chance to get up on him. I will have to get way too close for comfort. He's straight ahead of us. I am hunting the forest of Clouston, Florida, tracking down a neighborhood tough guy that I intend to kill with my handmade trident spear. A huge wild boar that has been terrorizing the farm workers in a nearby field is now on a direct collision course with me. And I intend to win. Here's your first lesson of the day. Boar hunting with dogs, 101. Mark, tell us about it. Well, I got two young uh, bay dogs here. Okay. This is Junior, the train cur, and this is Dixie, the old black mouth. They're wearing tracking collars, so we know where they're at at all times. Uh, so these guys have the magic nose, huh? Yes, they're, wow. they're, young, they're young dogs. They've been doing real good. Uh, they have what it takes to find them, and. Uh, Stop and see if you can get your shot. Yeah, then it's up to us. Yes, we're, do, we're doing strictly bay dogs today. I have a catch dog in the, in, in the back that we're not going to be using, but uh, in, in case, case of an emergency, case of an emergency yeah, yeah. He, exactly. the hog does anything that hurts my dogs or kill, kills bay dogs, and I can I can drop the catch dog in there to get everybody out of trouble. Mark, so they call bay dogs because they don't catch the hog. They run and they keep the hog. They bark when they see the hog, so they let you know where he's at. That's like, that means baying up the, the hog. Right, they're as aggressive as the hog is. If the hog tries to run, the dogs will run and bite him on the butt, make him sit down, make him stop. If the hog will just stand there, they'll keep the distance from the hog so they don't push him and hold him at bay. The two of them work better together. Yes, yes, and if, and if, if there's a lot of hogs in the area, they'll, they'll split up and they'll cover some ground. And when one dog finds a hog and goes to bay, the other one will be right there but with it. Common sense, if you just got one, the hog will chase just one of them. The boar will, so now that there's two of them, when it chases, the other one can come around right. and play the, the boar back and forth. Right? Two dogs will hem him up real, real, real good. 
one dog is the hogs thinking this little dog's not much of a challenge and we'll go after some it. Some of the boars like to run a lot and some hold the ground quicker. Yeah, so uh, uh, if this hog is as bad as everybody's saying, he, I think he's gonna uh, meet my dogs halfway. He's gonna come to fight these dogs. He's not gonna do a lot of running from them. Uh, that sounds scary. This is a catch dog. This is nasty. He's my nine year old. Uh, he's a wonderful dog. He's a pit, American Pit Bull Terrier. He's a snooty game dog. He uh, is very old for a catch dog because they usually don't live that long. So for nine years, he's uh, he's been a pretty good dog. He's got every hog we've ever put him on. He's got some. You can see what kind of how fierce these hogs can be. He's got scars all over him. This one's got stitches in it. This is a ten ply bu uh, bulletproof vest, and the hogs are penetrating this to get at him. So th this hog is definitely no joke. They can they can do some damage to the dogs. We, we won't be using him today, but we just got him for backup. But, uh, he's raring to go. He thinks we're going to go get one. You guys are ready? Let's go. Let's go get Boss Hog. We know this wild boar is hiding in this narrow strip of forest, bordered by huge farms. He hides in here during the day and raids the farms at night. Al Roberts also carries a trident and watches the forest. He is here to back me up if I need him. And I usually do. He's right here. Uh, there's a boar hog laying right over there. I don't know if that's the one we're looking for, but there's definitely one over there. We should uh, put the dogs on him and, uh, and bay him up so we can get a better look at him. But I think that's, that might be the one. It's amazing how close I am. I'm maybe 35 yards away and he's still laying there. He hasn't taken off yet. Orlando, he's, he's right over there. Uh, I get this uneasy feeling. Manny, you know? you're right. Um, th this hog knows we're here. He's very aware that we're here. He's not making any attempt to leave. So he's uh, he's very secure where he's at. He's in a little spot there, but I do believe if we get any closer, he's charging. Orlando, let's get the bait dogs on him so the bait dogs can confuse him and I can get close enough to that boar hog. Okay, well, let's release the hounds because uh, he's not going anywhere. Okay, yeah. Uh, Mark? Go to him. Go to him. The bay dogs are released. And like guided rockets, head straight for the wild boar. Game on. No worries. If you want to hunt with Orlando Paz and Full Rod Outfitters, we will give you all the information later on in the show. I am tracking down a huge wild boar. This animal has already charged after farm workers and killed dogs. And that's why I got the call to slay the wild beast. Uh, there's a boar hog laying right over there. I don't know if that's the one we're looking for, but there's definitely one over there. It's amazing how close I am. I'm maybe 35 yards away and he's still laying there. He hasn't taken off yet. We should uh, put the dogs on him and, uh, and bay him up so we can get a better look at him. But I think that's, that might be the one. Go to, go to. Yep. The bay dogs are hot on the trail of the boar and so are we. Constantly following the spinning, crashing mess of dogs and angry wild boar. Looking for the best opportunity to rush in for a throw with my trident. When you see a hog go after dogs, they, they know what them dogs are up to and he's not going for it. We are constantly closing the gap between us and the boar. And then he steps into a clearing and stares straight at me. 
Yeah, he's, got some, he's got some teeth hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, he's, he's, looking, he's, he's looking at us. Yeah, he looks like he has about three inches on one side. So he'll always be spinning to his right, wanting to put them teeth to the dogs. Talk to him. Moving closer to this wild boar has us all on edge. He is too fast for us and could take one of us out before we had time to react. So we are all on guard. I can tell this 250 pound wild boar is extremely smart. He's behind, he's behind the palmetto. No, he blew out, he blew out. He's going where you want him to go. All right, right now the, the bay dogs, they got him hemmed up under this pine tree. He's a big hog and he keeps attacking the dogs. So he's keeping all the pressure on the dogs. Actually, it's reversal. Instead of the dogs keeping pressure on him, he's actually pressuring my dogs running them down, throwing them to the ground. Uh, he, he threw my yellow dog pretty high in the air. They have them hemmed, and they definitely respect that hug. They're, they're not closing the gap, they're not getting in too close. They're, they're holding like a five, six foot bay off him, but they're definitely stopping him and biting him on the butt when he tries to pull out, but he meets them back with them teeth. He's, he's got big teeth on one side, and that's what I'm concerned about. You know, we, we get going on this hog here, and, and, and the dogs get too anxious. They're gonna close the gap on him and somebody's definitely gonna get cut here. Are they getting another dog? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to the trailer now. Mark's gonna go get another bay dog, man. He just hog is serious business. He's already flung these dogs. You've seen them about three feet in the air. He's held up at a bay right now. Let's get the third dog in here. We'll get a good tight bay. How far are we from the camp right now? We're, we're, we're quite a ways, probably over a mile. I mean, we are, we are, we're- It's we're, not we're, good, it's not good. I start getting anxious. This, you know, I start getting like <laughs> everything looks good on paper. It's showtime. We got them bait up. We're gonna get this done. But I, I seen them bait up and they disappeared from the map. I seen that happen before. They evaporated. I don't know where they went to another planet. I seen them just yeah. They, these dogs won't lose them. We may have to do some running though. Uh, we anything, need to them. anything is possible. The two, the two curs got the, the hog bait up and he keeps blowing. So I went back for uh, my older male. He's a yellow black mouth, his name is Dollar. He's worth every bit of it. I'm fixing to turn him out, he's gonna run the bay. Go to it, son. Dollar explodes after the pack. They have now surrounded the wild boar in a ditch. This may be it. Down to the good. bottom of that beach. Man, he's down in a high ditch, that's good stuff. I mean, that like is good ditches. stuff. I like the ditches we can throw from above. Oh, yeah. I guarantee by the time we get there, he's gonna run out. No, these dogs he's got him. him. We move in quickly. The boar will not stay there forever. I'm freaking exhausted. I mean, even though we're not running really fast the whole time, your adrenaline's pumping, your tenses can be at any moment this damn hog is gonna charge you and eat you. So it, you're just on every nerve, you're just freaking out and it wears you down. I mean, I'm so worn out right now. We've you know, been going a couple hours, but we're getting a chance to stop and it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. You're just on pins and needles and it's just draining, absolutely draining. Well, folks, you see the property line right there? Those guys were not kidding. That's where they saw the hog from the tractor. You seen him coming through? He's down in the ditch. It's a good spot right now. He's gonna hold up in there. And I think Manny's gonna get a good chance to get up on him. But that is the property line. You can see the tomato fields in the background. And yeah, those fields have been, been devastated. That's what they've been feeding on, those tomato exactly. fields. That's, so that's why, come, that, that that, that's where the workers, in. that's where the workers were when they seen them. Yep, yeah, so he's been living in here, comes out to the tomato fields and hurries back in here every day. Okay, so guys. This is it. Everybody get, get me on the back. All right, let's, let's, let's all get close. I am hunting a huge wild boar with my trident spear. This is one of the most dangerous hogs I have ever encountered. He is ferocious. The dogs have him bait in a ditch. This may be my best opportunity yet to get within spear range. With the dogs keeping the board distracted, we advance straight for him. It's too dense to throw the trident. So I grab a viking spear 
and hit the boar solidly, going right through him. The boar is enraged, spinning furiously. Give me a spear, give me a spear. And then the boar calmly turns towards me. Here we go, here he comes. Watch this, look in this wild boar's eyes. He is coming to kill me. If I mess up, he just might. Here we go, here we go. He charges and I hurl the trident at him. It stops him long enough for me to rush in and spear him in the heart. Look at the teeth! Watch out. That. This was not just another hog. This was a dangerous and worthy opponent. He knew it was time to die fighting. And I honor his spirit. <laughs> let, me, let me go over this, what just happened. Okay, he went into a ditch. The dogs are baying him. He's getting up and going. He's been running all day. I can't really catch up and keep up with him. So what I do is I'm gonna throw the trident, but there's some branches in the way. So I need to throw between some branches. I can't throw, so then I call for the Viking spear. And then I duck low, throw the Viking spear like that. It goes right through him, right through him. He starts spinning out. He takes out of the ditch. I don't have time to even think. It's like, I got the trident, drop it, he's charging, he's coming right at me. I just fire right into his head. And then when he hit him, he went crazy with a trident. And then that gave me a break to come in with the other spear. I'm yelling for another spear. And then I, I hit him good here. He started, he bled out immediately. And then Al came and <laughs> nailed him, man. Okay, uh, yeah. They're not done till they're done. They're not done till they're done because even when he's done on the ground, I'm looking at him. He can come up and, yeah, and cut you. I do not trust. The thing is, this boar has, has enormous <coughs> teeth. I mean, yep. enormous teeth. This is a, this is, look at that. Look at that bottom tooth, I can't even, this is, look how many inches he's got on there. I mean, look how thick it is. This is a, this is a very mature animal. You know, it's got a lot of experience, a lot of years, very aggressive. And uh, you know, th they're smart. The more, the more they, uh, they experience in life, the more they do, the smarter they get. The but I, I, I feel skin. good. <coughs> Now, the dogs are okay, dogs huh? Dogs are unscathed, not a scratch on them. So all that flying through the air didn't do any damage to them. Well, they're quick. Let me tell you, I heard a couple of screams over there and I saw this boar chasing them and I was like, I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> That's all I could think, like, wow. He is so fast. Uh, how fast do they run on their feet, Orlando? 30 miles an hour and 20 feet. Yeah. Wow. Strong, strong burst. I mean, you're not getting out of his way. No, like no, I no, said, no, no. He was coming. Look at that earless hog and it's healed. This hog has been caught and has or killed attempted, dogs. Attempted they, this hog, someone's tried to catch this hog. And uh, I'll tell you, he knows how to kill dogs and you saw how he was coming, man. Well done, buddy. Well done. So, so at one time or another, he, this is, he's been hunted by dogs. He's probably killed a bunch of dogs. Yes. And, and I know he's aggressive to the farmers too. A hog like this is the, uh, is the fodder for legends. And uh, like the worker said, he was not your ordinary hog. They told us this was a big boy. He would not give me a shot, he wouldn't give me a throw. And, uh, you know, how, how many miles we want? What you, you said, like four miles, you, you checked on the thing? Oh no, we were 4.2 miles. 4.2 miles, going through the woods, going through the woods, back and forth, back and forth, all over the place. It, 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 uh, for a minute, I thought we were gonna end up in another county. <laughs> the dogs need to check the hog out. Once they know it's dead, it's okay. They just need to look at it. They're, you know, this is what they live for. So they want to look at it and lick it and, and see it, you know. Now that they've seen it, they're okay. You know, they just have to come up and look at it. You know, they want to touch it, play with it, you know? 275 pound boar, taken with my homemade spears. Thank you, Orlando Pass and Full Rod Outfitters for an incredible hunt. One of the best hunts I've ever had in my entire life. Al, I thank you so much. You got my back. Keep me safe, man. You're the best. Mark, your dogs are phenomenal. Without your dogs, we could have never done this. Thanks, man. Wow. Guys, I'll see you next week on Savage Wild. We just had a swarm, a swarm of wild hogs move through here. Here! here. Watch out! And I, I, had, I had a rear, ah! Nice impact on him with a trident right there. I am Manny Puig. 
I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. It's early morning, we're in Southwest Florida on private property. This property is loaded with feral hogs. The challenge today is we can't use any dogs out here. We have to stalk and hunt. Orlando, what do you suggest? What do you think? Well, no firearms, no dogs on this property like you said, but uh, we've got a good combination of hardwoods and pine, cypress. It'll give you a good spot to ambush. Manny, it's loaded with hogs. We just need to get in there and, and start hunting. Yeah, but you know how they can smell you, hear you, and any little noise, anything. They, if they see you or see Al or whatever, they're gone. I mean, I, I'm very uneasy about the whole the whole thing. It's gonna be a very difficult, very difficult tough hunt. That's, that's what I see ahead of me. You're an expert with the Spears, Manny. If anyone can do it, you can. I didn't say it was gonna be easy. Well, you know it. Well, you're <laughs> full rock outfitters. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you, you, you gotta, you know, I'll take all the information you can give me. You're oh. my guide today, and Al, both of you guys. <laughs> Al's the enforcer. If anything goes south, Al yeah, steps in. Yeah, if I'm in. having trouble, if this thing turns <laughs> yeah. sour on me, I, I, I want to see you, you right there. You want me bit before you is what you're saying? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Glad to Better use a mage. All right, guys, let's get serious. Come on. Okay, let's go head on in the woods and uh, let's go find a hog. You can see right here all the tracks. This is the last remaining water around here. It's been a very dry year. You find the water, the hogs are not going to be far. You can tell right now all the rooting alongside here, some wallering. So this, this so is a good place to walk into the woods, I would think. You think around midday they're going to be soaking in these remaining water holes? If, if the day gets hotter, this would be a good place to come back to. For right now, we need to head back into the woods and go after them in there. But in the middle of the day, when it gets hot, they're going to come back here and look for this cool No, cool but there's water. definitely, you know, I'm going to try to get an ambush spot. I'm going to try everything I can. Okay. There, there, but, uh, there's some good trails we can get on. Well, it's, it's, it's early morning. They're still moving around. They're feeding. Let's see if we can get up on them and try to be, get in there, get kind of quiet on them. Okay. Let's, let's ease on in. Let's, let's walk into the wind here and get back in the woods a little bit. Let's go around this way. Palmetto forests are very noisy. Trying to move through them quietly is almost impossible. This will be constantly working against me as I try to stalk within spear range of a wild boar. We pause for a minute and scan the forest for any sign of movement. I have a feeling we're just slowly driving the hogs ahead of us. is good, but we are too noisy in this dry palmetto forest. We need another approach, and my guide, Orlando Paz, is on it. Manny, we, we, we've been walking around it. Let's walk a little bit further in there, but I keep hearing the hogs. It, it seems like there's still 70, 80 yards. We're not closing the gap. I, I think they're on to us. Let's just try to get a little closer to them. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna find an ambush spot. We're gonna set you up somewhere and possibly Al and I can drive the hogs towards you. Yeah, it's definitely. Let's try some. Try that because this is not working right now. Yeah, that's right. Let's, 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 let's ease on down so we can get a look at them. Without dogs, 
hunting for wild boar with my spears will be a huge challenge. I will need to constantly adapt our plan as the day goes on. And I will try everything from stocking up foot to setting up an ambush. Whatever it takes to get within spear range. He picked up my scent and everything and he bolted out of there. Today has been challenging to say the least. We're busted. I know it. They're smelling up in the air and they're gone. But I know I will have my chance with my trident. He picked up my scent and everything and he bolted out of there. I'm looking for a bigger animal. What we're gonna do is plan B. We're gonna use their sense of hearing and their sense of smell against them. Hunting wild boar in Florida is a blast. And later on in the show, we're gonna give you the information to full rut outfitters. I am hunting wild boar with spears in Southwest Florida. Tracking them on foot in the Palmetto Forest. Oh, pine tree right there. Yeah, over there, right underneath that. There's three or four hogs laying under there. I can see them at the pine house. Al Roberts has just sighted wild boar under the trees. We move in closer, but they all seem to have left. And then I run smack dab into one of them. We are both caught off guard and we look each other over. He's a little small, but I stalk him closer anyway for fun. I'm looking for a bigger animal. That's a nice one, but I prefer to get a bigger one. We continue moving through the forest. And then my heart skips a beat. Lying beneath the palmetto is a fat wild boar. It's hard to tell if it's sleeping. I stalk in closer. Stay, stay, man. Back up. And then I'm busted. I looked over there. There was a large boar hog right there. The only problem was when I saw him, I saw his head, and I knew it was one for sure. There was a palmetto branches right there. So he was behind him, I didn't have a throw. I needed to get a different angle on it. He picked up my scent and everything, and he bolted out of there. We are just making too much noise in this palmetto forest. We need a new plan. I got a feeling we're busted, you know? Yeah, they must have known we were coming. This didn't work very well. We're busted. I know it. They were smelling up in the air and they're gone. They heard one of us step on twigs. They smelled us or something. But I'm sure there's a group of them up ahead. They're gone now. Okay, Manny, I suggest ease out of here for a little bit and set up the ambush plan. There's no sense in pushing these hogs any further away. They're going to get back in the swamp and there's over 70,000 acres. Let's ease on out. The wind is favorable for an ambush. Okay, this property is full of wild hogs. The only problem is that they're picking up our scent, they're moving up ahead of us, we're not able to get close to them. So what we're gonna do is plan B. We're gonna use their sense of hearing and their sense of smell against them. I'm gonna set up an ambush and Orlando and Al are gonna get, try to get behind the hogs far away and slowly drive them towards me. When the hogs pick up their scent and their noise, they're gonna move away from them and hopefully they'll be paying attention to Alan Orlando and not to me. And then I'm gonna sit in an ambush spot and hopefully I'll get a throw. Spear hunting for boar is never easy, 
These animals are smart and fast. He picked up my scent and everything, and he bolted out of there. Their eyesight may be poor, but they have good ears and very sensitive noses. But my expert guide, Orlando Pass, has a plan. And Al Roberts, the enforcer, has my back. We are now moving to plan B, deep forest ambush. We just had a swarm of wild hogs move through here. I am hunting wild boar with my spears in Southwest Florida. We are on private land. No dogs are allowed here. Somehow, I have to get within spear range. Stalking did not pay off. We're busted. I know it. They were smelling up in the air and they're gone. But my guide, Orlando Pass, has a plan. This tree is gonna offer. What we're gonna do is plan B. We're gonna use their sense of hearing and the sense of smell against them. The key to making an ambush work is location. We have to play the wind. We've got a solid wind, so we have a good chance of success. Now, Al and I are gonna drive the hogs slowly towards Manny, but we need to find a spot right now that will give him cover and will have the wind in his favor. Remember, these hogs are not gonna be running through here at 100 miles an hour. They're gonna come relaxed, so we don't wanna spook them with his scent or any movement. So let's go find a good spot for Manny to hide in. As we make our way through the dense palmetto, signs of wild boar are everywhere, including fresh droppings. Wind's blowing this way, Manny. This tree is gonna offer the cover you need. These hogs are coming through here. It's obvious, look at this devastating the trail that they're leaving. Okay. Uh, which way do you think that pack went? We know they're back that way. That's where we left them. Are you sure, you sure not th they're not this way? There's a lot of land, Randy. We're going to well, do the best we can. Well, let, use the wind to your favor. Yes. I'm going to set up, but let's, let's get moving on this. I got me a few, a few palmettos. My knife here. Set up. I'm gonna try to cover myself a little bit here. If they run this slow, he's gonna look through here. And if I don't move, it's, the whole thing is movement. He picks up movement. I gotta have my spear ready. If he sees me do this, he's gone. And he, if he sees me blink, he's gone. I gotta be real still and behind this so he doesn't pick up my, my silhouette. Ready to start to drive? Let's keep going. Let's do it. There's more than one way to drive an animal into an ambush. There's a conventional method of making noise. Some people yell, bang pots, big groups of people, and just flat out push animals at full speed to, to people that are waiting to shoot them, hit them with a bow and arrow, whatever it may be. But another method, which I like to use, especially when there's not a lot of people, is what we'll do is we'll use this, their smell and their hearing to their advantage, but instead of pushing them to where they're flat out running, what was, what's been going on is we can't get within 60, 70, 80 yards of these hogs because they're just staying far enough ahead of us to where they don't have to run. They know where we're at and they know they're safe as long as they can keep that buffer. So if Orlando and I can go get above them, use our wind and the little bit of sound is we're still sneaking. Obviously they hear us and lead, use that 60, 70, 80 yard buffer for us to push them right towards Manny it will have a completely relaxed animal coming by to use a spear. It's not gonna do any good to run a hog by him at 400 miles an hour. It's hard enough as it is to hit one in general standing still. So if we can just get him to move through nice and easy, it'll give a better opportunity for him to put a spear into one and it'll also not blow everything out of the country here. Now it's just a matter of waiting for the wild boar to come to me. Orlando Pass, and Al are both experts at driving wild boar into an ambush. And there's an art to it. And then the first wild boar begins to appear. Materializing like ghosts out of the palmetto. 
I am afraid a small hog will get too close to me and bust me. So I stay frozen, stock still in my blind. And then two huge wild boar, over 200 pounds each, show up. I am dying to get a chance to throw at one of them. But they stay back and seem to have a feeling that something is wrong. Staying just out of my range. Time after time, they both come back and then shy away. We just had a swarm, a swarm of wild hogs move through here. Uh, a couple I had out, there was a big light colored boar, light colored, about this color. He was right there and I had the log in the way and I couldn't, I knew if I stepped around he was gonna see me. So I, I wouldn't, he would not step into that one opening there. There were two of them there. I was trying to get that bigger one and I couldn't get, I, he was in range. All I had to do was him, all him to step in the right place. I had him, this is plenty of distance for me to throw. I should have had him there. <sighs> Difficult, man, they, they, it's kind of like, they know, I think they sense I'm here, but they're not smelling me, they're not seeing me. And they're like, they get, there's a certain line, they just, they go like that and they don't cross. The line of fire that I needed, man. Frustrating, extremely frustrating. We're hunting hogs in Southwest Florida. This morning, we tried stalking. We couldn't find any stalking, then we tried an ambush. We're, Al and Orlando came around and they tried to drive the hogs towards me. I almost got one on ambush. I, I was within range, I didn't have a clear shot, so I couldn't take it, and so I missed that opportunity. Now it's the middle of the day, it's starting to get a little warm. Right about now the hogs are bedded up. So we're gonna look around and see if we can sneak up on them while they're bedding underneath palmettos and brush and they get in secluded areas, they hide right now. Then you're right, Manny, right now, this time of the day with the heat, these hogs, shade equals hogs right now. So we have to be very careful. You may not see them till the last minute. These black hogs will get into the darkest, coolest little area where they can be refreshed. They don't want to be out in the sun. So now very slow, we're going to slip through the woods. And as soon as we see one of these hogs, I think one of the worst things we can do is try to approach it. Just make pretend you didn't even see him. We're gonna ease on by him. You're gonna make pretend like you never saw that hog. Remember, he's relaxed, he's cool. I, I he just need an open, an opening you know, and a, a clear shot. I got get within range and one little opening in the bush where I can throw. Well, if we find one, they're I, probably I might, gonna be better. I could use this one or this one depending what a hole I see. Okay, okay, well let, uh, let, let's start walking through the woods and uh, see if we can s slip up on a bedded hog. I mean, that's, that's gonna be a good opportunity if we can find one. Well, well let's, let's, let's go, let's go. As we move deeper into the forest, I'm starting to feel anxious wondering if I will get another chance at a big boar. And then Al Roberts catches a glimpse of hogs in the shadows ahead. It's right to the left of that, it's right inside of there. Okay. They're gonna be, when, you, when we step in there, they're gonna be off to the right. My senses are all on high as I head into what I hope will be a close encounter with a huge beast of a wild boar. Frustrated by a number of missed opportunities, I am focused on only one thing, taking a wild boar with my trident spear, using the heavy brush for cover. I'm moving closer to where we sighted the hogs. Al Roberts tells me that only one wild boar remains, a big one and he may run off any second. I have had enough missed opportunities. This is going to happen now or never. I am closing on the wild boar with only yards left between us. I decide to charge in and throw the trident. The spear slams a boar in the side. He's mine now. Watch out, Rob. Got him! I got him pinned! 
Good. He's down. He's down. We got him. We got him. I can see it's bubbling. I got him in the lungs. Wow. Man, look at look at the teeth on him. Look at the teeth on this guy. Oh yeah, God. you don't want to get caught with that. They're super no. sharp also. They're in mint condition. Man, oh, I couldn't man. believe it. I saw Al, I, I seen him up that way, and he was working his way to the woods. I'm trying to sneak up on him, and Al was coming this way, and all of a sudden, Al signaled me. I came in, threw the, snuck up from behind. I think he was looking at you. Well, what happened? I hit him, I hit him the trident right there. I hit him from behind, perfect, the way I want him. He started spinning around. I jumped in with a spear, hit him there for a catch on the, on the neck, and you came in with a trident. I seen him, I seen him, and he, as I was cutting him off, he saw me but he didn't think I saw him and he tried to lay down right here in this palmetto. And when I seen that, I was like, okay, he, he doesn't think that we know we're here. And that was when I signaled you and I knew you could come over because he was he, focused he must, on me. He was focused on he you. He was focused on I me. I turned around and I, I, had, I had a rear, bah, nice impact on him with a trident right there. And then he started spinning around and then that was it. Come in with the other spear. Wow. What a nice hog, look at that. Man, I know, man. This is look a trophy. That. That's a, that is, this is considered a trophy hog, man. We really, we got a nice. Manny. Wow. Well done, buddy. Orlando, <laughs> awesome. Full lot outfitters, man. Awesome again. Al, thank you there. <laughs> always got me covered, man. Yeah, this uh, this always makes you nervous, man. It was been an awesome hunt, a great, great adventure. Trophy hog. See you next week on Savage Wild.